Oh, welcome uh, to video two. So um, the way I, I see this, these videos uh, working together is that the first video of each of the 18 days, I will discuss a theme from uh, the book by uh, Sir John, uh, Wisdom from World Religions. And in the second video, I will talk about a theme uh, uh, or a religious tradition, a theme in religious studies, that is, as I will speak about today, I'll speak about the difference between religion and spirituality. And then after a couple of more days, I'll be talking about specific religious traditions, short intros to them. So um, the, the topic of this video is uh, religion, theology, and spirituality. What's the difference? What's the difference between religion, theology, and spirituality? And our, our learning objectives are to evaluate the expression, perhaps you've heard it, perhaps you've used it yourself, perhaps you agree with it, perhaps you find it annoying when someone says, I'm spiritual, not religious. So in order to understand that uh, sentence, that claim, we would have to uh, analyze these two words, spirituality and religion, and what they mean for us. And then, uh, of course, uh, once we've done that, we can then distinguish what is a religious aspect and what is a spiritual aspect in a religious movement. So this is the sort of, this is an academic religious studies approach to this topic. It's a little bit different from the first video, but it can be helpful because it can help us to clarify our thinking on these topics. So uh, to go to the, to the first uh, learning objective, um, how do you respond uh, to someone saying, I'm spiritual but not religious? What is your reaction to that? You might want to note your reaction to that. Is it positive? Is it not positive? Do you, is it a new idea to you, the idea of separating spirituality from religion? Perhaps it's an idea that you have worked with and you found it not to be applicable any longer. It's just because it's been said doesn't mean it's final. Now, these days, and when people first started saying that, I probably began to hear that maybe uh, about 25 years ago, not any earlier than that. And, you, you know, to understand how this expression is used today in contemporary U.S. society um, and, and how it may be used increasingly in other parts of our planet would require a, a lecture on the religious history of the United States. Let's just say that it makes complete sense in, in light of the trajectory of religious life in the United States, which always stresses uh, a kind of informalism and a, uh, and a movement away from institutions towards personal spirituality. This is a key characteristic of U.S. Uh, spiritual life, of North American spiritual life. Um, so, uh, at, in the beginning, uh, people who said this were sometimes subjected to scorn, especially from people who are very committed to a religious tradition. But as time has gone on, people making this claim have, have constituted an area of study where they're known as SBNRs, spiritual but not religious people. And not only that, SBNRs seem to be the fastest growing segment in American religious life today. If you were to just take SBNRs alone, they would pretty much outnumber everyone else. And it's particularly the case with younger people, with millennials uh, and with um, 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 the, the generation just before them, suddenly forgotten the name of them, the, the, uh, the, the millennials and slightly older people. Okay, so um, what do these two words mean for you? Take a moment and think about it. And if, if, I had a, if, I could, if I had a board behind me, I'd put a Venn diagram up with three circles. And what you would start to notice is that what we call spirituality and what we call religion can be separated. They can be defined as distinct, but that there's an a lot of overlap. There's a kind of middle circle in which many aspects of spirituality and many aspects of religion actually coincide with each other. So a few words about um, what religion includes, some of the characteristic features of a religion as a religious uh, movement, stories and myths, narratives, stories. 
All religions tell stories. All of human life is about storytelling when you really think about it. Where would we be without stories? Each one of us can tell a story. If we were to interrogate, if it were possible, an insect or a creature in the forest, they probably, if they had language, would tell some epic story about their survival and their quest for food. Stories are central to life. Inspired teachings, revelation, the multiple revelations of the world's traditions, or the great insights of the great philosophical and meditative teachers. Ultimate theorizing, I like to use this expression as a way of referring to what we would call metaphysics or theology. Rituals and liturgy, this is essential. And very important to religion is community and identity formation. That's why so many people derive such a sense of well-being and connectedness, because they have friends, they have kind of an extended family in their religious institutions. Um, norms and rules. A lot of people reduce religion just to the rules, and that they find in un, uh, intolerable. But in every area of our life, there are norms and rules. One cannot expect to be successful in important areas of our lives by simply never following any rules. Um, revered objects and places, uh, places to go on pilgrimage to, gr places at, at the center of your religion that are highly revered, and spiritual practices. Uh, if we were to focus on, so that's the religion side uh, of religion, of religious but, and spiritual. That's, those are the distinctively religious aspects, and many of these can also be found in other organizations, the military, the corporation, uh, the hospital, the university, all have these aspects as well. Now, the last of these uh, that I named is spiritual practices. In a way, spiritual practices is the hinge between spirituality and religion. It's what links them. And it links them because I would say it's the most important aspect of religion, because without spirituality, which is an orientation to a reality greater than ourselves, religion is just like any other human institution. It, it's a, it, it's, the religions are corporations. Religions are big institutions with all of the uh, imperatives that any big institution will have. But spirituality is the dividing point. And a spirituality, uh, what is that? So, I can spend a whole lecture on spirituality, actually more. You can define spirituality very broadly as a kind of openness to higher realms of existence or as a kind of uh, uh, openness to, to, to change. Um, very vague, these definitions of spirituality tend to be very vague. Or you can define it very specifically in terms of your own religious tradition. But the way I would define um, spirituality is that it's the it's cultivation of receptivity to, uh, to uh, a, a spiritual reality. It's openness to spiritual reality. It's that receptivity uh, that uh, Sir John was talking about in an earlier lecture. And basically, spirituality has two, two competencies, two skills. There are two spiritual muscles, if you will, that we need to exercise in order to practice spirituality. And they have names, uh, scientific names as well as traditional names. The one, one, and the scientific names these days that are used in contemplative neuroscience are focused attention meditation and open monitoring medit meditation. Focused attention meditation, you focus on a specific object. In this case, it's usually the breath. Open monitoring meditation is where you just allow your thoughts to rise and fall, and you observe them as if you were sitting by the shore watching the waves roll in. That's it. Spirituality is fundamentally reducible to those two practices. More traditionally, we can, uh, use, we can use language from many traditions, from the Christian tradition, from the Buddhist tradition, from Hinduism, uh, and from any other, every other great contemplative tradition. These two skills are in, in, in the Buddhist tradition are often referred to as shamatha, or tranquility meditation, and vipassana, or insight meditation. We can speak of concentration uh, and insight, concentration and, uh, and, uh, and, and an awareness. Uh, these are the two skills. Um, and 
the way that you would practice, we will get into this more as we go on, is that you bring your mind to stillness through concentration meditation and through open awareness with the mind, when the mind is stilled, one becomes aware of everything that's going on in one's consciousness and that one can then surrender the unhelpful aspects, thoughts, memories, and allow that helpful background of universal consciousness to begin to transform your mind.